Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. And we just want to talk to us for a few moments about people that you cannot help. People that you cannot help. In the book of Revelation chapter number 3 and verse number 20, this is Jesus talking and he was talking to the church. And notice what he says. He said, behold, I'm reading from King James Version. I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. He, and sup, in other words, I'll come in and dine. We'll hang out together. But he says, there must be an opening of the door. Now, we're talking about people that you cannot help. The subtopic is you can't help those who won't be open to hell. There are people in the church who are part of the church that are not open to hell. Mm -hmm. And we have to understand that there are just some people that you cannot help. But now when you realize you can't help them, you don't give up on them. You give them up to the Lord. You don't mock time with them. You give them up to the Lord. And when you don't mock time, meaning you don't take time trying to straighten them out, you take time praying and calling their name out before the Lord. But you don't give up on anyone. But however, we have to learn that there are some people you got to give up because it's some people you just can't hear. Now watch this. This was again Jesus talking in the book of Revelation and talking to the church, not the world. And notice what he says. He says, I'm knocking at the door and if you hear my voice, open the door. He says, I can't help you until you open to me until you let me in are you open to my help are you willing for me to help you come on talk back to me if you can this is not a long message but it's one for us to think about now i can I, this could turn into a series but i've already said to uh sister clayton i'm not gonna turn it into a series because it can be revisited because when you start talking about people that you can't help you can talk a long time about that and there's a there's one group over here and another group over there and another group out there and another group back there and another group under there and another group sitting up so so it can go on so we can revisit it however today we want to give it the gist of understanding that there are people you cannot help and those you cannot help are those who are not open for the help or open to the help Amen. yeah people not open to help there people go to the doctor and the doctor will give them some things to take and they'll throw it away. Because they're not open to help. There are people come to Bible study and, and in Bible study on Zoom and, and, and they're just there. Some of them, not everyone, because they're not open to help. Jesus said, you got to open. Watch this. He didn't say, I'll kick the door in. Watch them people that want you to kick their door in to help them. Don't do it. Jesus didn't do it, so we ain't got to really try to kick folk door in to help them. Jesus said, I'm standing here and I'm knocking. I'm knocking. He said, and then I even let you know it's me because you hear my voice. How many people know that some folks see your name come across on the phone and won't answer because they don't want your help no how? They know you called to tell them you better do better with your money. You better do better with that man or that woman or she's going to leave you. And they see it and they can hear your voice when you leave the voice there, but they won't open. So they can get to hell. Oh, 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 boy. He says, you got to be open to hell. If you open the door, he says, I'll come in and I'll hang out with you. We are dying together and I'll be with you and you will be with me. He says, but are you open? Will you open the door today? Watch this. Again, not a long message. However, it's a message that calls all of us to think about. Because all of us in some area in our lives, we need help. Amen. Well, pastor, I don't think you need no help because you're the preacher and you're the pastor. I'm the one need help first. So that, because see, sometimes if we aren't careful, you'll let your title take you somewhere. That God didn't say go. And he said, I need to help you with that. Are you going to let me step in and help you? Amen. 
Now let me let me say this. I wrote down a few things here. I want to help set this up, and then I'm gonna give you a few people uh, or a few groups or however you want to word that that you that you just cannot help because they're not open to the help. First of all, I want you to understand this that I wrote down here on my notes. It's it's rough being rejected by those you're trying to help because you can see where they're headed. And the love of God in your heart for them is saying, please let me help you. It's, it's an uncomfortable, uneasy place to be in when you are trying to help folk. Because you see where they're headed, but they don't want your help. They're not open to the help. Sometimes that happens with children. You done been where they're trying to get to. You've lived what they about to mess up. And you're trying to help them. But they're not open to your help. Now let me say this. They're open to your beautiful. Some of them. But they ain't open to your help. Come on somebody. I, I didn't say all people children. But some children are open to your beautiful. But they're not open to your words of wisdom and knowledge. You can't help them when they're like that. And if you keep going in your beautiful. All you're doing is becoming an enabler. Sometimes when you find out they're not open to your help, cut the money off. Amen. They'll holler help then. <laughs> help! They got to turn the lights out on them. Now you want to help them? Send them to the dollar store and get them cash. <laughs> so if I tried to help you to be a good steward and show you how to manage your money, then live beneath your means. Amen. Amen. This is a rough way, this is a rough place to be. Do you know what? Do you not know how Jesus had in his heart he says he's talking to his church and he says i'm knocking at the door and you all won't let me in you're not open to my help mm. Mm. watch this watch this what people just can't help wait a minute we're gonna we're gonna tell you a few of them in a moment a few groups but watch this listen to this carefully it's a rough place to be again when you're trying to help people because you can see where they're headed and they can't see you. Mm. And the love in your heart for them, the love of God that you have for them is saying, would you let me help you? You don't have to take that route. Now let me just say this. When I come home, I used to hear this when I was a chap back home all the time. And they said it in school and other places. Experience is the best teacher. I learned something after I got older. Experience is not the best teacher. The best teacher is when you learn from what somebody else went through. Why should I want to get hooked on drugs when I had somebody in my life who was hooked on drugs and I saw what drugs did to them? I should want to learn from what they went through, what they went through. I should want to go through that. So the best teacher is not always experienced. Sometimes the best teacher is what somebody else experienced. But now watch this. You got to be open to that. Open to learn from what they went through. You got to be willing to say, you know what? I saw my Paul, my mom, my grandma, my papa, or whoever. I saw them go through this. I don't want to have to go through that. But now in order to say that, you got to be willing and, and be open to the help that will keep you from taking that same route. It's rough when you see people take the same route that you've already taken and know it didn't lead you to the place where God was going to do some great things in your life. It led you to misery and chaos and, and being upset and one, one, one fit after another. Uh oh. Women now, women, 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 women. Let's talk about the first one. Group, because there are several groups. Like I said, I'm not gonna make this a series. I said initially it would be a series, but it's gonna be a word for the day because we'll get enough today to help us, and then we can get some more later on. We can always revisit it. Amen. How many know that we should practice the law of repetition when it comes to God's word, anyhow? So we can revisit it again. But I just want to talk about number one. I want to talk about this group of people that number one that I put down on my notes here, and I learned from being in class. So this is nothing new because you can go find that there are many pastors that have talked about people that you cannot help. It's just my turn to talk about it here at Open door and for those who are with us by way of social media now it's our turn to get it on this side of town and since i've been in class and learning some things i said okay let me go now and put it out here for our people the first set of people that i put down that you can't help and because they're not open to the, the help that you can give them you cannot help those who see you as a threat 
You can't help those who see you as a threat. Now, wait a minute. The Pharisees. See, if you check God's word, what I'm giving us today is straight word. Because from Genesis to Revelation, there were people who weren't open to the help of the Lord. So don't, th don't think nobody coming up with no new anything about this word. This word was already here. It's just time now to bring it to our forefront so that we can start making sure that we are not those who are not open to help. Amen. So you can't help those who feel you are a threat or who see you as a threat. Watch this. To their authority. The Pharisees, they saw Jesus as a threat. They didn't want his help. Watch this, watch this. Some of y'all looking at me strange. Let me give you a few scriptures here to help us out. I got so many pages up here. That's why I said I'm not going to go through all of them. Watch this. In Luke chapter 5 and verse 30, the Bible says, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? But Jesus overheard them and said, Those who are well have no need of a physician. But those who are sick, I have come to all the righteous, but sinners are, are come. I have come, excuse me, I have called the righteous, but sinners to repentance. The Pharisees saw that as a threat because the Pharisees wanted to keep people in their little group and keep them under their thumb. Ain't nobody saying nothing in here. So when people see you as a threat to their authority, as a threat to their agenda, as a threat to what they want to do, watch this. They will not be open to your help. As a matter of fact, when folks see you as a threat, some of them will try to get rid of you. Mm -hmm. That's what they did with Jesus. They said, we got to get him out of here. <laughs> He's messing up our plan. See, when folk aren't open to help and they see you as a threat, they are then try to plot some things to get rid of you. Huh? He said he came to save the people who recognize their need for him. Jesus said, I'm here to help those, watch this, who don't see me as a threat, but see me as a help. I gonna be uh, watch this, watch this. Stay with me for a minute now. You so that's that's the first group. And that's just one of many. You can't help those who see you as a threat and not a help. Now let me say we talk to the church now. You know you can try to help your brother or sister, but they see you as a threat. Some of them will, not everyone. Let me throw that throw that in because now I'm gonna put everybody in the same. Category. However, but I do want us all to know that we all need help. There are those you can talk to your brother or sister about some things and they'll see you as a threat because they're not open to your help. Because watch this, you got to be careful of those who think they got it going on but don't even know where they're going. All right, now watch this. Let me go, let me go to, the, to the next set of people because we don't want to make this long. We just want to help you to understand some things now. Watch this. You got to watch those, again, who see you as a threat and not a help because they will treat you like you are trying to hurt them instead of trying to help them. That's why you got to be careful with people. You don't tell me what to do. I know what I'm doing. Because they don't see you as a help. They see you as a threat. And they don't understand you're trying to help them and not hurt them. Because sometimes when you run into those kind of people, they like where they are. Do you not know the Pharisees, they liked where they were? If they didn't, they would have received Jesus as the Messiah. They wouldn't even receive him as Messiah because they liked where they were. Because you got some people like thinking that they in control. Somebody well, got to be careful when people get in positions. Because they'll think they run something. But God got a way of letting everybody know he's in charge. He's in control. He's God and beside He There is none other Oh my God let me run on here So you got the people that See 
see you as a threat. So they're not going to see you as a help. And then you got to watch the next group, those who know they need it, but they don't want it. There's a group of folk that know they need help, but they don't want it. Come here, Israel. Israel was in Egypt for 400 years crying out to the Lord. Get us out of here. Lord, we want me. And the Lord sent Moses down. And let me do the, the short version of it. And got him out of there. Talk back to me if you can. And when he got him out and they got through the Red Sea and got in the wilderness, they turned coat on God. Now you need him. But now you don't want him. How can you be over here hollering for him? And then get over here and don't listen to the one who helped you when you was hollering over there. Amen. See, there's a group that's Israelite. Go check the story out in Exodus. I, 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 did you go read it? See what happened when they got out of Egypt and got in the wilderness. They knew they needed help, but they didn't want it. Talk back to me as you can now. Watch this. I heard the old folks say you can lead a horse to the water. But you can't make him drink. You can send a boy to college, but you can't make him think. <laughs> Come on. How do you deal with people who know they need help, but they don't want it? Now, don't forget the foundation of scripture because they're not open to it. See, when you know you need help, you got to be open to say, it's me. I need help. You can't walk around, watch this, pride, pride. When you run into people who know they need help and don't want help, that's pride. The Bible says warning before destruction and pride before the fall. That's why some people are falling right now and say, first giving honor to God who's first in my life. Why are you always on the floor? Why are you always in a mess? Why are you always in something that God ain't in? Because you know you need help, but I don't want. Huh? Come on. Amen. See, watch this. In the fifth chapter of John, you just write down and go read it. Watch what happens here when you know you need help and don't want help. See, when you know you want help or need help, you got to be open to help when they show up. In the fifth chapter, when the guy said, Jesus asked, Do you want to be made whole? See, you got to know then at that point when Jesus shows up in your life and asks you, do you want to come out of that? Do you want to come out of this? Do you want to be made whole? You got to know at that point, you got to be willing to say, yes, I do. Because when you know you need help but don't want it, that's a bad place to be in. In that fifth chapter again of John, he asked the question, do you want to be made whole? Let me tell you what my point I'm trying to stress here with this is this. You can't do so much talking when you know you need him and you want to be here. Don't start talking about, well, I want to be saved, but my mama wasn't saved. <laughs> do you want to be saved? <laughs> you know you need help. But do you really want it? So just answer the question. You know, it's, it's bad when people ask you a direct question. <laughs> and you get them a round the way answer. <laughs> Did you wash the clothes? I was going to. That's not what I asked. <laughs> that's, that, that's a yes or no. <laughs> Did you put that money in the bank like I asked you to do? Well, see, I, I stopped by and I was going to... Yes or no? <laughs> See, when you run into people like that, they know they need help, but they don't want it because they dancing around. Uh-oh. You got to watch that. You got to watch that. You got to watch when you run into people that know they need help and don't want help. Watch this. Don't miss this. Watch this now. Watch what'll happen. And they, they know they need help. Watch this. That's because sometimes they're comfortable where they are. Huh? Amen. Can I help you with this? Yeah. What I was just talking about? Watch this. In other words, when people ask you a question, stop giving explanation. 
Give an answer to the question. <laughs> when Jesus, go and check it, I believe it's John 11 chapter. Yes. When Jesus got to where Lazarus had done died, and here come his sisters, Mary and Martha. And they say, if you had been here, mm -hmm. our brother would not have died. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, show me where you need. Mm -hmm. Watch what they say. His body stinking. <laughs> he been dead three days, four days. Listen, answer the question. <laughs> too much information. You can't help people who try to give you too much information when you ask them a direct question. Jesus said, show me where you need. I ain't ask you how long you been dead. I ain't ask you whether this body smell good or not. <laughs> Show me where you lay. Because I am the resurrection. I'm the help that he needs. Come on now. Yeah. My God, death won't hold it up to just show me where you lay. Yeah. They help people who know they need it and don't want it. And they making more excuses and explanations than giving you an answer to the question. I'm going to go back to the foundational scripture. Jesus said, I'm standing at the door now. He talked to the church. He said, Do you, are you going to hear my voice mm -hmm. and answer this knock? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm, 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 I'm going to bring it in momentarily. <laughs> I won't say right now. So I see. You just said you're going to bring it momentarily. <laughs> I want to give you a few more of those you can't help. Watch this. You can't help those who don't want help from you or want you to help them. Now, wait a minute. Who you talking about? Now, we're going to bring a little closer to home. You can't help those who are too familiar with you. Familiar with we get family from. Sometimes you can't help them because they don't want you to help them. Ain't nobody saying nothing. You can't help those who don't want your help because they feel like you trying to lord over them and they saying, I don't want your help. And they get, see, that's why we got to be careful with getting too familiar. Don't let people get too familiar with you. Love everybody in Jesus' name, but don't let some folk and family get familiar to the point where, watch this, they won't respect that you belong to God. Because they don't got too familiar with you. Well, pa well, Pastor, can you bear that out? If you go to Matthew the 13th chapter, you'll see what they talk about. As a matter of fact, I'm going to turn and read this one, D, because somebody need to hear this. I ain't going to wait for you to read this one. Come on, let me turn here to Matthew the 13th chapter. Watch what happened here in the 13th chapter. How familiar they got with Jesus. So you got to understand they got familiar with Jesus. They'll get familiar with you and I. Mm -hmm. And say, I don't need your help. Amen. Watch this now. The 13th chapter of Matthew. Let's go to verse 53. The Bible says in Matthew 13 and verse 53. And I'm reading from the King James Version. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence. Verse 54 says, and when he was coming to his own country, know, know what you say? When he come into his own country, let me say one more again. When he had come into his own country, that means he came into a place where he was familiar with and they were familiar with him. When, you know, when you come into your own family reunion. <laughs> Talk back to me if you can. When he came into his own country, he taught them. He taught them in their synagogue. In so much that they were astonished and said, Whence has this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Verse 55, is not this the carpenter? See, instead of just receiving what God used him to do, ain't that, ain't that Joseph's son? I know his mom and him. <laughs> See when folk are familiar They won't receive the help That you're being used to give them Because they're too familiar With knowing who your mama them was I know it's me mom And it's papa them Who cares <laughs> You need help what he giving you Take the help Uh oh 
See, when they get too familiar now, they won't receive the help. Watch this. Let me read a little further. And it's not this in verse 55 of Matthew 13. It's not this the cop of the son. It's not his mother called Mary and his brethren James and Joseph and, and, and Simon and Judas and his sisters. Are they not all with us? With then have this man all these things? Verse 57. And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor save in his own country and in his own house and he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief he says the property without honor in his own homeland i want you to know sometimes that in your family they get too familiar with you they're not going to receive the help you can't help them when they're too familiar because they don't see what god is doing in your life to be a help to them so see what happened the Bible says that Jesus didn't do mighty works there because of their unbelief. They didn't believe because they were too familiar with it. Come on. I believe some of us here and by way of social media, you've experienced that. You got folk that's so familiar with you. Family. They, 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 they still want to talk about, I know when you were in the clubs. <laughs> well, I'm not now. Y'all ain't saying that. Greg, you know you can sing. You remember when you were singing Luther Vandross? I don't now. Yeah. See, too familiar till they can't receive. Now that you're singing, yes, Jesus loves me. Uh -huh. Come on here. Yeah. You ain't singing a house is not a home no more. <laughs> but you're singing since I met Jesus. I'm all right now. Yeah. That's why you got to be careful with family who always want to talk about what you used to do. They can't receive the help that God is using you for right now. Because you, you can't help them. Because they're too familiar with you. You can't help those like that. Amen. Come on. Amen. And then you can't help those that don't want the help right now. Amen. Now what do you mean? You can't help those that say, well wait till I get myself together. <laughs> well then they'll never get the help. Because you and I who are in Christ know that we couldn't get ourselves together. You ask people, say, when are you going to come to Jesus? Well, I got to get myself together. There's some things I'm doing that I know ain't right. There's your answer right there. <laughs> if you know they're not right, come to the one who can make you righteous. And he'll take care of all of that. Come on and bring all of it. Jesus ain't scared of nothing that you're doing, who you've been with, where you've been. He says, come on to me, all ye that labor. He said, I gave an invitation. He said, come unto me. But you can't help those who don't want help now. I, I, I get it. Can I, I wrote this in my notes. Time ain't on our side. Amen. See, that's why you got to be open to the help. Because time ain't on our side. I say time not on our side. There's enough of us in this ministry, even by way of social media. When we first got together, we had black hair, all of us. <laughs> Y'all talk back to me. Now, if it ain't if it ain't white, it ain't all black. It's something that got in there. It, it might be some auburn or something, but some color done changed something. Some of us, when we got together twenty years ago plus, we were able to do some things and step up and and look here, we could jump up out the chair fast. Now, now we do the old people rock and say. Oh. Uh, uh, see, see, time ain't on our side. <laughs> you got to know you need help now. You used to be able to get up without somebody helping. Let somebody help you out that chair. Amen. It's all right. Amen. You got to be open to the help. Amen. Come on. Just wait. I'll be able to get myself up again. When? <laughs> it's okay. Say, help, baby, come here. Them old folks, come here, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I know when I come wrong, they, they, they weren't too proud to be. They say, come here, baby. You say, ma'am, help me get up from here. <laughs> and they have all them walkers like people got now. What? When I come wrong, folks had sticks. Yeah. And it was enough stick to make a chicken cook. 
Miss Fanny Jenkins had a stick. My grandma had a stick. Miss Lily had a stick. He a stick, there a stick, everywhere a stick, stick. They had a stick and still would grab your arm and about to pull your shoulder out of place. Snatch it up on you. Lay down here, what's ailing you? You wasn't what's ailing you? You the one can't get up. You're like, you can't help me up, you ain't strong enough. <laughs> who really needs to help you? <laughs> but you can't help those who don't want help right then. And they say, wait, I I'll get it later. Time is not on our side. We got to understand that. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the ninth chapter of the book of Luke, go read it for yourself. The man said, let me go back and tell my family this. Because see, they, Jesus said, come now. He said, let me go back and do this. See, you can't help folk that don't know they need help now. Mm -hmm. Amen. Somebody just said, and it's right now. <laughs> now let me close with this. I'm closing now. <laughs> First no, this, this is the only close. <laughs> Go to Matthew, since you're already there. Let me help you now. When you, how to help people. When you can't help people that know they need help. Because they're not open to it. Jesus gave a perspective from scripture. In the 10th chapter of Matthew. And this will help you. Now somebody say, well pastor, why are you, why are you reading this and giving us this? Because let me just say this to us. When you're trying to help people that don't want your help and you see you can't help them, if we aren't careful, we'll become bitter. And that's not why the Lord is sending us to help folk. You don't go to help folk to get bitter because they don't receive the help. You go to help folk and if they don't receive the help, you still get better because God got another assignment, another set of folk, another place that people will receive the help. So in the 10th chapter of the book of Matthew, let's go to verse 13 and verse 14. Notice what Jesus said here. Jesus was sending the disciples out two by two and preparing them to go out and what they were going to be faced with. So he said in this 13th verse of the 10th chapter of Matthew, he says, and if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. Now wait a minute. What is Jesus saying here? Let's read verse 14. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust from your feet. Jesus said, you don't become bitter. You shake off the rejection and you become better. He said, when you run into those you cannot help, you do not leave your peace with them. You take all that God has given you and get to the next place because it's not about you. It's about God getting the glory mm -hmm. out of your story. That's why he said when you go in and they don't receive you, get to the edge. Shake all of that off. Don't leave your peace with them. Take the peace that I give you. Because I need you to go to the next assignment where somebody is going to receive the help. Amen. Amen. That's why we have to know whatever we do, do it as unto the Lord. Stop getting mad with people and then get built. Because when you get bitter, you know what you say? I ain't helping nobody else. That's why I don't help nobody now. <laughs> when you should have got to the edge and shut the dust from you, shake off that rejection and go on in the name of the Lord Jesus with the peace of God in your heart and move to the next place for the glory of God. Because you're going to run into people. And sometimes it's going to be family friends co-workers, other church goers that you can't help. Now, if Jesus said it, and he did in Revelation 3 and 20, I'm knocking at the door of the church. He said, if you hear my voice and open to me, 
I'll come in and help you. But you can't help those who are not open to be here. Don't feel bad about it. Because you're going to run into some more. But you get to the edge of that place of rejection and shake it off. Don't get bitter. Get bitter. And keep the peace of God. And release folk. Don't give up on nobody. But give them up to the Lord. While you go into the next place, say, Lord, I've done what you told me to do. He said, I know you did. Keep them in your prayers now and go to the next assignment. Because there are those people you can't help. And people who are not open to the help, you can't help them. Pay them. Plead with them. Pump them and prime them. And they still won't receive the help. Because they're not open. You got to open the door. And let Jesus come in. And whatever you're going through. I'm a living witness. And some others here today. And by way of social media. We can tell you that if you let him in. He'll help you. Let him in your marriage. He'll help you. Let him in your finance. He'll help you. Let him in your health. He'll help you. Let him in your mind. He'll help you keep a peace of mind. Let him in. Where you live. He'll help you with those children. Let him in on the job. He'll help you get through that supervisor that seems to always want to ride your bike. Amen. Let him in. He said, if you open to me, I'll help you. Because mm -hmm. I'm in there. And I'm going to make the difference. Because you let me in. Yeah. Would you let him in today? Yeah. Don't be one that's not open to the help. But open up and let Jesus come in. Mm -hmm. Let him in. Mm -hmm. Those folks say he'll be your friend. If you let him come in. Open the door. Open it wide. And let him come in. And for this reason. We are out. Stay encouraged in the Lord.